Good morning. We begin outside once more today, where perhaps the church always is. Outside the walls, outside in community, outside our own clique, outside the sheepfold and in the world. Not always the most comfortable place and at the moment it feels all the more unfamiliar. But one of the more regular images we have in the Bible is one about sheep. Lost, found, sheepfold, shepherd, gatekeeper. And all these tell us one thing, that it is out in the world we are to live. And the shepherd is the gatekeeper who doesn't trap us inside, keep us within the walls of the sheepfold. No, but that through him, going through the gate into the world, we are given life and life abundant. And that is where we meet each other today and what we share with each other. John 10, 1 to 10. Let me set this before you as plainly as I can. If a person climbs over or through the fence of a sheep pen, instead of going through the gate, you know he's up to no good, a sheep rustler. The shepherd walks right up to the gate. The gatekeeper opens the gate to him and the sheep recognise his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he gets them all out, he leads them and they follow because they are familiar with his voice. They won't follow a stranger's voice but will scatter because they aren't used to the sound of it. Jesus told this simple story but they had no idea what he was talking about. So he tried again. I'll be explicit then. I... And the gate for the sheep. All those others are up to no good, sheep stealers, every one of them. But the sheep didn't listen to them. I am the gate. Anyone who goes through me will be cared for, will freely go in and out and find pasture. A thief is only there to steal and kill and destroy. I came so they can have real and eternal life. More and better life than they ever dreamed of. Let us pray. O great shepherd, in you may we know such life. We see the things of the world and what they are, the want of power, the value of fame, the desire of wealth. But in the greener pastures of love and grace and abundance, May we lie down, may we find strength, may we know these as our home, where rivers run and the waters call our names, renewed in a love that refreshes and recharges our souls each day, even now in these stranger pastures of today. And may you call us back from the ill-judged paths we follow to your deeper ones, shaped by truth, honed by questions, and well-worn by many companions on the way. And for your name's sake, as we travel through difficult times, may we trust your abundant promise of new life, that we might turn from that which dulls us towards that which kindles hope in us, from that which shrivels us to that which fills us with generous hope. These shepherding symbols, your rod and your staff, that lead to the way of grace and generosity and trusting your presence beside us. That we might dream of banquets again, of bread and wine, cups overflowing again, of tables open and filled with guests again. For we trust your goodness and mercy follow us, cling to us, refuse to let us go all the days of our lives, and we will dwell, wherever we are, in your presence, forever. So be it. Amen.
you ever fear we sentimentalise the faith? That probably should not be a question but a statement. We do sentimentalise the faith. And the shepherd image is one we do that with very well. I know one of the favourite windows in the church is the, the Good Shepherd window in the King Memorial Chapel. It's lovely. The sun shines in and it warms you because of its familiarity. And when Chris plays the tune Crimmond or Brother James's Air, other tunes are available of course, the combination can be quite heady and we all get goose pimples. Being a shepherd, however, was anything but sentimental. It was a hard life. No one trusted you. You weren't allowed to take decisions in communities. If anything was stolen, it was the shepherd who would get blamed because you were itinerant, constantly moving around. And so no one trusted you. Yet this is the character who is like God. It's a popular and regular image in the Bible. So people sentimentalized it because how else do you cope with God being an outcast, a vagrant, itinerant kind of character? And that's where the problems began between Jesus and the Pharisees. They wanted God cleaned up and romanticised. Jesus, however, stripped it back down again and more or less said, well, if you want to find God, you have to be able to identify with the last, the lost, the lonely, and the least. So it was never going to go well after that because that set of people were least likely to be close to God according to the rules. They were the sinners, they were unclean, they were in that position because they'd done something wrong in the past. But then it gets worse because Jesus goes on to say, I am the gate, I am the one you have to go through to move from the sheepfold, the church within walls, to the grazing pasture, the church without walls. And whoever enters by me will be saved. I came that they may have life and have that abundantly. So we've got this shepherd saviour who identifies with the last, the lost, the least and the lonely and says, I'll save you with abundant life. That's not the script we have. We are taught to start with, sorry God, I'm a sinner and you have to sort me out, redeem me, cleanse me, forgive me. The shepherding God who identifies with the last, the lost, the least and the lonely doesn't say, I came because you're all sinners and you all need sorting out. The itinerant saviour says, I came that you may have life, abundantly. When Jesus talks about salvation, he talks about sharing life, as if the two things are the same. It's in the fullness, start with the life, and that's the gospel. Not the debilitation, the limiting version that has us all bound up in sin and in debt, but the life-affirming one. And those who steal that, the rule-makers, who don't go with the life are the robbers and thieves. So do you hear the Pharisees smarting because they start with everyone sinners and go through many rituals to get to God? Jesus says, no, come to me because I start with the life. I am the shepherd and those who are least and lost and last and lonely, you aren't saved from something. You're saved for something. And there's the gospel. The very nut word we need for today, we are saved for life and life in its fullness. There's the good news, the promise for today. The moment we're limited, we're locked down, we're isolated, all these negative words. But they will change that we might have life and life in its fullness. So when we come back together, let's start with that, with the life. Let us celebrate in its fullness and trust the Good Shepherd who leads us to a salvation found in the abundance and the fullness of life, which is coming towards us. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. 
He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. He calls his sheep by name and leads them out. I call you by your name, your name which is a gift to the world, your name which holds my name within it. It is why you recognise it and follow my voice. I call you by your name, you who are named Peace, you who are named Justice. I call your name Grace and Truth, Hope and faith, you compassion for the hungry, voice of the silenced, sitter by bedside, bread maker, I call you, I offer you a vocation, a calling, companion on the way, listener to the hurt, binder of the wounded, unbinder of the bound up, I call you and lead you out. Follow me into the world. Let us pray. Shepherd and God, in all the places where we pray today, we bring among us those in every place. For there is no sheepfold too small for those we pray with, and those we pray among, and those we pray for. In our world today, we feel a little astray. And so we name those who are ill and grieving in homes and hospitals, residential care and community. We always head for answers and we don't have them yet. So may we do that which is more human and hold each other, make time to remember and pause enough to share compassion we pray for medics and researchers, auxiliaries and porters. We pray for community workers and volunteers, for shopkeepers and service workers. We pray for those worried about employment, about education, health and care. We pray for those facing abuse, hunger, those unsettled because the routine they need that gives stability and pattern is not there. We pray for leadership and learning, those who have that impossible job of running the world. O oh, great shepherd, may we discover the best of ourselves, the new love of neighbour, the consideration we enjoy of others, the help we are more willing to give, the generosity we feel in such ways. May we follow you, be led back out into the world when that day comes, and know we have all that we need. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Go now with the shepherd. Let that shepherd call your name, and know you are held and known and loved.
and the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the companionship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you for inviting us into your home again this Sunday. We hope to join you again next week, but we can join you each day of the week as there are so many different things going on in the church online. We may not be able to meet in church, but we do meet as church every day of the week. So go to nkchurch.org.uk and you'll find all the activities that are happening there. So take care of yourselves, keep safe, and we'll see you again soon.